to induct Leonard Skinner into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, please welcome Kid Rock. Between the, uh, between the uh, sun going down last night and the sun coming up, we jotted down a couple notes here. Um, let me just say that Leonard Skinner, I mean, simply is the shit, period, to me. Um, the Ronnie Van Zant, I mean, Ronnie Van Zant was the truth to me. He was a true Southern poet. I mean, really was. Um, he was the simple man that he sang about. When you really get into those lyrics and you start to talk about him, and I always say that Leonard Skinner is really, um, it's kind of Ronnie Van Zant's house to me, but man, it was built by a lot of hands, a whole lot of hands, great hands. Um, talking about the west side of Jacksonville, Florida, you know. Uh, not, 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 not rich people, not any money, you know, the wrong side of town. And uh, to me, Leonard Skinner, these guys were like, uh, kind of what a lot of the, the guys in, in Britain and other places that, that absorbed this rock and roll blues music so well wanted to be. They wanted to be poor white boys from the South and knew how to pick and play like that. And these guys are the epitome of it to me. Um, I mean, you can't talk about uh, Ronnie without, of course, uh, Alan Collins and uh, Steve and Cassie Gaines and, you know, some of them that are w not with us anymore. Uh, and uh, Bob Burns and Ed King. I mean, Bob Burns, I mean, as I understand, these guys were playing a softball game. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Ronnie hits a ball and hits, uh, hits Bob Burns in the head with a softball and knocks him out. And somehow him, Gary Rossington, and them get together and go, hey, man, we should start a band. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's great. Um, also, of course, the great Leon Wilkinson, who was a very dear friend of mine. This, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter. And um, to go back to Ronnie, I think one of the most amazing things that I've learned about him is that he never wrote his lyrics down. And when you listen to these lyrics and the songs that, that he penned from Curtis Lowe to Tuesday's Gone, Ooh That Smell, Give Me Back My Bullets, Saturday Night Special, The Needle in the Spoon, What's Your Name? Of course, the uh, national anthem of the South, Freebird. And you imagine a man that never wrote these lyrics down? I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible to me. And of course, Sweet Home Alabama. I mean, to me, that is probably the greatest song ever written. I mean, pound for pound, that song, Sweet Home Alabama, that lick Ed King wrote. Uh, I mean, um, I went to uh, Iraq a couple years ago to play for our troops, and we were kind of in front of a about 5,000 kids at Saddam International Airport in a hangar there. And we didn't really have a band together. There was a military band on stage. You know, these kids are kind of like, hey, man, get up and play for us. Get up and play. So we kind of grabbed. There were some musicians and other people together. We kind of put together a makeshift band last second. I looked out at those kids, and I'm like, what do they want to hear? First thing I did, tick bum bum ba dum da bum bum ba dum and they went nuts. And I mean, that kind of sums it up for me right there. Um, The three guitar army, you know, that was some pioneering things. You know, three part harmonies on guitar. You know, where's that going nowadays? <laughs> Hiding in the haystack somewhere, I, I assume. Um, the influences that they've influenced, not only myself, but people like Hank Williams Jr., Charlie Daniels, Gretchen Wilson, Metallica. I mean, all of us are, you know. The, the songs where they've been played in movies like Forrest Gump and Happy Gilmore. I've seen these songs, I've spun them as a DJ in clubs in London, New York City. I've seen them bang on the honky-tonks in Nashville, you know, down in Tootsie's and whatnot. And um, that's pretty incredible. Uh, and, and the way the tradition is carried on today with uh, his younger brother Johnny, who's out there singing those songs every night now. I mean, that's pretty incredible to me because the hardest thing to do, I would imagine, in life is to stand in the shadows of somebody very famous to try and fill those shoes, and I think he's done it with class and dignity, and I'm sure his brother would be very happy that they're carrying on that way nowadays.
Um, Artemis Pyle, I mean, you know, come on, great drummer. You know, we go through the list now, Johnny and Ricky Medlock and Gary Rossington, Billy Powell, Ian Evans, Carol Chase, Dale Rossington, Michael Calione. There's been, oh, this is a hard speech to write, there's been over 25 members in this fucking band, all right? <laughs> they have more members than the frickin' YMCA, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I love it to death, I live by it, and I think, uh, you know, one of Ronnie's greatest lyrics was, if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? And we do remember Ronnie. And we do remember <laughs> Alan Collins, Steve and Cassie Gaines, and Dean Kilpatrick, and, you know, the, the, the history's out there if you want to learn about it, and I would, I, would, I would encourage everyone to dig into that. But more importantly, I think we're here to celebrate the music and the families, and what a wonderf wonderful sight it was to walk in the other day and, you know, I've played with Skinner a few times, and to look at the stage and see, you know, Ed up there, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, Bob Burns, and Artemis, and like, you know, these guys, you know, all playing together again, and Judy here, and everyone, it's just, uh, it's really a special feeling, and um, congratulate them, and it's long overdue for these uh, southern boys, you know, flag-waving, simple people to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Leonard Skinner.